Hi guys, Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips, here again at uh, Scuba Shack in Gravenhurst, Ontario, a great little dive shop. Um, this is a very short video, I just wanted to clarify a couple of things. I have mentioned in the past when I'm dealing with the servicing of regulators about O-rings. Uh, O-rings, as you, if you don't know, let me tell you, are critical. Without O-rings, we wouldn't be scuba divers. Well, that's not exactly true, but they certainly made scuba diving a lot easier. O-rings, good old O-rings. Uh, whether they're the older neoprene type or they're newer uh, synthetic ones, doesn't matter. An O-ring is critical to scuba equipment. You know there's an O-ring in the valve of the tank. Without that O-ring, you know what happens. It leaks, it leaks air. But I have mentioned in, in, in those previous videos that, that there are two types of O-rings. And when I say two types, I don't mean material size or anything else. I mean two different applications of O-rings within the scuba system. Two different applications. And I have used specifically the words dynamic and static. So there are two types of O-rings based on their application, dynamic and static. Now from the names alone, you should get some idea as to what the difference is between the two. Let's deal with a static O-ring first of all. Static by its very nature, the word itself means static, stable, uh, uh, un unmovable, and that's exactly what that O-ring does. Here's an example of a static O-ring. This is a port plug. On a first stage of a regulator, the correct term for that thread of the hole is a port on regulators, okay? There's usually three or four. Modern regulators have four, five, or six sometimes. There's usually a couple of low pressure ports. One for the regulator, one for the safe second or the BCD hose and so on. And then there's almost invariably at least one high pressure port. They're actually marked right on the body of the regulator so you can't confuse them. They used to be. Nowadays they're not marked anymore because nowadays the threads are different. So you can't mix them up. But it wasn't uncommon years ago to mix them up. Anyway, these are ports. And if you're not using the port prior to pressure gauges or if you don't have your BCD or for whatever reason, you're not using one of the ports, they have to be plugged. If you don't plug the port, air pours out. So what do you use to plug them? Well, you use a port plug. Are you keeping up with this? <laughs> this is the port. You want to plug it, you use a port plug. I know this is complicated stuff, but anyway. Now, when you put this metal plug in that metal body, no matter how hard you screw it down, under air pressure, it's going to leak. I'm still laughing about that port plug. Anyway, under air pressure, it's going to leak air. So you have to have some kind of a seal. No, you don't use silicone sealant, and you don't use Teflon tape. You don't have to use any of those things because port plugs come with an O-ring. Can you see it on there, Kev? An o -ring. You all know it's there. You don't have to look at it. Everybody knows there's an O-ring on the port plug. You put the port plug, line it up with the threads. The steel port plug is now firmly against the brass. Yeah, this is brass. It's chrome to brass, but it's brass. Brass port, and the rim is sealed with an O-ring done. It doesn't move. You put this on a tank, turn on the pressure, 3,000 psi, doesn't matter. That port plug and the o-ring attached to it doesn't move. That's a static o-ring. It does its job, which is to seal. That's all. Okay? Clear. Now, let's look at another type of o-ring. <clears throat> inside the first stage, inside the first stage, of a piston regulator, there is a device called a piston. Surprise! <laughs> Sorry, I'm just being goofy today. Sorry about that, guys. This is what the piston looks like. And now you know why it's called a piston. Because it looks a little bit like a piston. It has a piston head and it has a stem. Now this piston is inside the piston regulator. And this piston is what actually regulates the airflow through that piston regulator. As you need air and draw air from the second stage, draw air from the intermediate pressure, the piston rises off the seal. You see the bottom edge is sharp, it seals on a hard Teflon seat. The piston rises and air comes out of the tank. Goes through the first stage and the second stage and you get a breath of air. When you stop breathing, intermediate pressure builds up and it pushes the piston down from the top, pushes it down until it seals. Cuts off the air, it's just that simple. So this piston is constantly moving up and down. Interesting, a little side note, interesting enough, you envision, as everybody does, that when you inhale, the piston moves up. And when you exhale, the piston moves down. That's the theory. In actual fact, this piston oscillates. Oscillates. It moves so quickly, 
That's what oscillation means. Is, they're like mosquito wings. This moves so quickly, it's a blur. Because what happens is these are extremely sensitive, extremely sensitive. So you have 150 psi intermediate pressure, and you start to draw on it, the pressure drops to, shall we say, 149. 149. So the piston actually senses that, and it opens. Yeah. So the pressure increases back to 150, so it closes. You're still sucking on the other end. So now it's down to 148, so it opens. Pressure jumps to 150, it closes. And as you're taking that single breath in, this may go up and down a thousand times. Oscillate. If you ever have heard a dive buddy or a diver at any time, and he, he draws air from his regulator and it whistles every time you breathe in. It's like a wine glass. You know, you run your finger around a wine glass, you get oscillations. That's what's happening. Anyway, that's on the side. So this O-ring that's on this piston, on, on a piston, see it? There's the O-ring. This happens to be a big one. They're not all this big, uh, all, all these uh, O-rings. But that goes onto the piston. And this is inside a cylinder, yeah, sealed in there. It's all the time. It has to seal air. Yeah, high pressure air. Actually, you know, but anyway, it has to seal the air pressure. And it all the time, through the full life of that regulator. And if you have a piston regulator, it's not a sealed regulator, like uh, Sherwoods are all sealed, but a lot of piston regulators are not sealed. That means that there's seawater going in here. Seawater with salt and sand and other gooky stuff is in here, and it gets on the walls of the chamber. This is rubbing up and down all the time. That's why these wear out quickly and have to be replaced. Anyway, that O-ring does the same job as a static O-ring. It seals, so air cannot get past it, but it's moving all the time. Guess what it's called? Uh, you guys are so smart. That's a dynamic O-ring, okay? See the difference? Static O-ring, seals, done. Static O-ring, seals, but it moves. Some are on pistons, some are on rotating devices. In here there's a, a dynamic O-ring so I can rotate it. There's an O-ring in there that still seals, even though I'm ro I can push it back and forth. It stays sealed in there. So there's various applications of dynamic O-rings, but the primary difference is that a static O-ring doesn't move. It's in place, seals, done. Pardon me, a dynamic O-ring seals, but it's moving. Sometimes quickly, like a piston, sometimes slowly, like the swivel on your second stage. There's an O-ring in there to seal it. It's a dynamic because it's moving, right? There you go. A little bit of information. I thought you'd enjoy that maybe at the next scuba club meeting. You can be the, the smart guy. Okay, that's it. Talk to you soon. I got some more ideas. Take care. Hope you enjoyed that. Learn something. Alec Pierce Scuba.